family and those of you who are joining us in this morning's worship service. I'm grateful for the opportunity that allows us to share this special time together as we have assembled to give thanks and praise to Almighty God through virtual technology. For you who are working behind the scenes providing technical expertise that allows us to come together once again, I thank you. In less than 24 hours, my fellow colleagues and I, members of the Washington Annual Conference with the support of our laity, youth will give an account of our stewardship for this past conference year. Every conference year has its own challenges. However, I am sure you will be inclined to agree that these past four and a half months have been and continue to be for you and for me the most challenging in my pastoral journey. This pandemic has altered and in many instances completely changed everything we do both in our personal and professional lives. However, for me, it is also a period of reflection, of assessment, and most of all, thanksgiving to Almighty God. Reflecting over what God has enabled us to do in ministry, assessing its effectiveness or lack thereof, and finally, thanking God that you and I are still in the land of the living. In preparation for this morning's service, as you can imagine, it's been a very, very trying week, and a host of thoughts and ideas have been flowing through my mind. When I consider much of what has happened over these past several months that has affected every aspect of human emotion, all the depths of members of our church family and extended family, the earthly transitions of noted civil rights advocates, Reverends Dr. Joseph Lowry, Reverend C.T. Vivian, and the late Reverend, the late Congressman John Robert Lewis. The continuing effects of C-19, furloughs, loss of employment, social issues, the awakening of racism and the continued effect to marginalize and suppress equitable and equal participation to people of color. And continuing, contending with those who have taken it upon themselves to serve as judge, jury, and executioner. The escalation of some who wear the blue, who indiscriminately beat and sometimes kill black and brown people is ongoing. When I attempt to put all of this in perspective, I wonder how is it we have not thrown in the towel, gone off the deep end, or just saying, as I shared a few weeks ago, the hell with this, and yielding to our emotions and respond in a manner that is inconsistent with our character. What is it that has sustained us during these days of immense challenge? By now, some of you are saying, Pastor, you mean to tell us that you don't know? You, of all people, should know the answer to that question. Yes, I know, as the lyric so vividly states, if it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? So I asked the Lord to provide a scripture passage that would embody, that would encapsulate, that would personify all that we have experienced low these past several months. And I found it. It was in the Old Testament, in the book of Lamentations. Now, on first recognition, this book for some might seem strange in that these five chapters written by the prophet Jeremiah reveals his grief, his pain, his destruction of Jerusalem and the exile of his residents to Babylon. The prophet provides brief detail as he recalls his horrible disaster and provides for us very little comfort. However, I discovered that though this book is a collection of funeral songs, as its meaning, cries, weeping, lament, mourning, herein lies words 
that offer hope and encouragement. So this morning, for a few moments, turn your Bibles to Lamentations chapter 3, verses 21 through 23. Lamentations chapter 3, verses 21 through 23. And it reads, This I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. For a sermon topic to preach this morning, and as always, I solicit an interest in your prayers. Not yet. Not yet. Jeremiah reveals to you and me in these three verses that in spite of the mounting weight that seems at times overwhelming, that appears to offer no solution. We cannot, as believers in God and his son, Jesus Christ, take on a fatalistic mentality. Jeremiah acknowledges the severity of their current state. And however, as bad as things are, our relationship, our history, should remind us that we can and we shall rise above our current circumstance. Jeremiah gives us these, these snippets, these nuggets of encouragement. Jeremiah reveals in this, in this chapter, in these verses, that, that Jesus is an intercessor. Although the signs may have the appearance that all is lost, Jeremiah assured his people and God through his Holy Spirit assures us today that the end is not yet, that their continued failure to comply with the commandments of God and their belief in self-sufficiency, attempting to equate themselves with God, all of which, which would be justification for God abandoning us. However, that, beloved, would be inconsistent with that which Jesus promised. Jesus promised, I will never leave you or forsake you. Oh, yes, God sometimes, because of our disobedience, allows us to stew in our own mess, but he never abandons us or he never leaves us to fend for ourselves. And even when we mess up, and Lord knows we mess up a lot, Jesus is always there, making intercession on our behalf, petitioning, pleading with the Father to give us not a second chance, but to give us another chance. Mm -hmm. Beloved, there is nothing of ourselves that makes us deserving of this relationship, but it is through the love that God and his grace that he shows toward us. So I cannot speak for you, but as for me, I don't know where I'd be if it were not for Jesus Christ making intercession on my behalf. So Jesus is an intercessor. And not only is Jesus an intercessor, Jeremiah reveals to us that the love of Jesus for us is limitless. He says, he says, the compassion, the sympathy, the benevolence of God through Jesus Christ is immeasurable. All of us can recall at least one instance, whether as children or adolescents or even in adulthood, where we have failed to comply with the rules, mm -hmm. the governance of the household, and found ourselves in a bad way. Like the story of the prodigal son who became too big for his britches and at his request was given the portion of his inheritance and left the safety and security and love of family and went off prematurely. Initially, to him, it seemed like a good idea to go off and to explore the world. However, in time, his resources were exhausted, exhausted, and those who were with him when he was partying and buying setups abandoned him. But one day the Bible says he had an epiphany he had a realization that I should return to my father's house. 
And when he did, he was not scolded for the error of his ways, but the Bible says he was received by his father with open arms. Beloved, we've all had moments like this. And when we honestly review our actions and our behavior, we have to acknowledge that we were warranted of punishment. However, but because our parents, because our heavenly father loves us so, they would not abandon us, but rather receive us with welcoming arms. Who, beloved, wouldn't serve a God, a God like this? So Jesus is an intercessor. His love for us is limitless. But the part that I really like to zero in on is that part where he says, his mercy are new every morning. Yes, this has and remains to be a season of tremendous challenge, the testing of our faith and trust in God irrespective of our stations in life. We've had periods where we've had to endure affliction and endure health challenges of every sort. The death of loved ones of all ages, sometimes prematurely. The pandemic continues to escalate, revealing each day new methods of contracting. The blatant disregard of sound instruction from those in the medical and scientific community of how we can reduce the spread by those at the top levels of government is disturbing. They made it clear that their agenda is not one of the well-being and safety of people, but rather an agenda that is political. They are insistent in trying to force our children, our babies to return to the classroom, wanting to use them as test cases. Federal troops without the invitation of local officials have invaded our city where leadership is of one particular party. The total disregard for truth and honesty from the highest levels of government continue to dismantle the respect in which our nation once held among our allies. The difficulty of proving basic necessities, providing basic necessities for our survival, food items, because of their unavailability. The late Dr. MLK JR, words still resonate in my ears when he said these words. We've got some difficult days ahead, but I'm here this morning to say as bad as it might appear, the end is not yet. I know it looks bad, but I hear God whispering to me sometimes in the midnight hour, don't worry about it, I got this. The end is not yet. I know that every now and then when we recall how God has responded and been in the past, it's good, beloved, to reflect. It's good, beloved, every now and then to go down memory lane and, 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 and think about God's goodness to you. But what Jeremiah reassures his family, what he reassures his people, and I want you to be reassured this morning. Don't forget God said, morning by morning, new mercies I see. This is to say that I have some blessings in store for you that, beloved, you can't even be, you can't even imagine. I'm grateful. I'm indebted for the mercies that God has allowed my family and me to experience. Have I earned them? No. Do I deserve them? No. But because God, through his son, Jesus Christ, loves me, morning by morning, new mercies I see. And with all this occurring, some of which I have referenced in this message, have caused some to believe that this is indicative of the end time. But I hear God saying again, as bad as it might appear, the end is not yet. I, I, I began this message by saying that in less than 24 hours, we will be convening the 70th session of the Washington Annual Conference, virtually. I want to take this opportunity to thank all of you for the love and support that you have given me and my family during this past conference year. Your words of encouragement, your cards, your emails, or your phone calls 
know that I am appreciative to my lovely wife of 40 some odd years, Pamela, for her continued unconditional love and many acts of support toward me, especially during these past months. To my children and grandchildren, I want to remind you that you are the world to me. There is a traditional hymn that we open each session of the annual conference, not only in the Washington Conference, but throughout all of African Methodism. And that song goes, and are we yet alive. This beloved song embodies the experiences of every believer in Jesus Christ. And though we're not physically in the same locale, we can still feel the blessing to be able to utter these words. You heard me say that when we sing the hymns of the church, whenever we sing the sacred songs of the church, we ought to sing them until the lyrics become personal. When it begins to articulate your testimony, when it begins to express your story, when it begins to express the degree of your faith. Well, I can't speak for you, but I want you to know that this song is personal to me, especially when I get to the verses three and verse four, where it says, what troubles have we seen? What conflicts have we passed? Fighting within and fears without. Since we are simple now, but it doesn't stop there. It says, but out of all the Lord mm -hmm. has brought us by his love, and still he doth his help afford and hides our life above. Beloved, the end is not yet. Keep on trusting God. Keep on believing in God. Humankind has tried from its inception ever since they snatched our forefathers from the cousin of Africa. They thought that that would end us, but Jesus said, not yet. When it brought us to the shores of America and enslaved us, they thought that that would wipe us out. But I hear God saying, not yet. Jim Crow and, and, and poll tax, they thought that that would end us. And I hear mm. God saying, not yet. Mm. Discrimination mm. and segregation, they thought mm. that that would end us. That would be the end of us. But I hear God saying, not yet. Very people occupying the position of president of these United States who, who could give a kitty about our welfare and our well-being. They thought that we would throw in the towel and quit. But I hear God saying, not yet. And I want to remind you that that idiot and imbecile in the White House right now is pulling all sorts of tricks out of his bag. But I hear God saying, not yet. I hear God saying, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the earth. I will be exalted in the heavens. Beloved, the end is not yet. Why? Because morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, God's hands have provided. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Summer and winter, springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above. Joy with all nature in manifold nature to thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Great yes, is God's faithfulness. Great is God's faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hands have provided. Great is God's faithfulness, Lord, unto me. I hear God saying, hold on a little while longer. This too will pass because the end is not yet. Gracious God and our Father, we thank you for this brief time together with you and with other believers as we have attempted to proclaim what thus saith the Lord. We pray, God, that as we traverse through these difficult times, that our faith in you will not waver, but it will increase. This we ask in Jesus' name and the people of God said, 
Amen.